Good morning, Atlanta First United Methodist Church. Good morning. Right, I like that. Welcome to worship here at Atlanta First. I am so glad to see all of you here in worship and want to welcome also those who are worshiping online this morning. I want to welcome any guests who are here today, and I want to invite you to worship in whatever way the Holy Spirit leads you to worship this morning. I'm pleased to announce that our pastor is leading us through our series, The Gospel According to the Lion King, and so we'll be hearing that this morning. Just a couple of announcements. I wanted to let you know that you are invited to join in serving the community through the life of this church. We um, are offering, if you look in your bulletin, a new small group called the Naomi Small Group. It's a women's study co-led by Erin Martin and me, and it's bringing together a diverse group of women from all across the country to study uh, Naomi and to share different experiences and perspectives that they have to talk about God. We meet every two weeks. Our next meeting is Tuesday, July 23rd. And there are, uh, this is an online study group, so there are instructions in your bulletin on how to log on. If you are interested in the study materials, we do have some available here at the church. Uh, the study guide is $10, and you can purchase that just by seeing Jeannie Spencer in the church office. I also want to invite you on Saturday, July 20th, to come be a part of our friends at the front door ministry. We gather uh, in the fellowship hall at 10 a.m. on Saturday to prepare sack lunches, and then we hand those out um, to, with uh, water in conversation with our neighbors um, in our community. So I wanted to invite you to that as well. You can learn more or sign up to participate through your Connect cards that you received in your bulletin this morning. I also invite you to take your bulletins and your prayer list home with you so that you might read and learn of other ways to connect this month through Atlanta First. Now, please turn your attention to the tolling of the bell that was cast in 1852 as it signifies the faithfulness of God in our lives and invites us to center our souls in worship. Please join me now in our opening prayer. Gracious and most loving God, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to gather to worship you one more time. Please be with us this morning. Please be with our pastor as she brings a word from you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now I invite you to stand as you are able and join us in our affirmation of faith, a modern affirmation which is found in your hymnal on 885 and also uh, in your bulletin. <clears throat> Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is all over his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. You may be seated. 
Good morning and welcome to worship at Atlanta First United Methodist Church. I am Jasmine Smothers. I am the lead pastor and it is my joy and my privilege to welcome you to worship today. We at Atlanta First exist to worship God, to serve people, to grow together, and to engage the city of Atlanta. Elisa has invited you to take out your Connect cards, and these are very important. They're important because they help us to be in relationship with you, but they also hold us accountable as the people of God. They help us to be accountable to worship, to serve, to grow, and to engage each in every week. So don't forget to fill those out and to place them in the offering plate later on in the worship service today. If you are worshiping online, I want to give a very special welcome to you and invite you to let us know how you are going to worship, serve, grow, and engage online in the comments as well. We, if you are worshiping with us for the first time or worshiping from out of town, please know that this is your family. And if you need anything while you are here, please let us know how we might be in ministry with you. I do want to remind you of a couple of things that are happening this week. Tomorrow and Tuesday are Amazon Prime Day. Say with me, Amazon Prime Day. Now, how many of you need more stuff? <laughs> Almost nobody raised their hand. <laughs> I see my babies walking in. <laughs> but there are people who do have needs. And you can take advantage of the deep discounts on Amazon doing Amazon Prime Day tomorrow and Tuesday. Connect those with the weekly mission donations that are found in your bulletin and send them to the church. Send them to the church um, so that we might be good neighbors to our community and take care of those discounts so you might be good stewards of the resources that God has given to you. Amen? So say it with me. Amazon Prime Day. Weekly mission needs. Generosity. Amen. All right. I also want to thank our leadership team. If you were on the leadership team at Atlanta First, um, stand up for me this morning. You can clap for them. <laughs> Your leadership team puts in countless hours, countless hours on your behalf to make sure we are doing the absolute best we can do with God's resources to worship, serve, grow, and engage through the ministry at 360 Peachtree Street. Amen? And they have given of their time, talents, gifts, service, and witness over this weekend, Friday and Saturday, and are here bright and early this morning serving you um, through uh, a, a leadership retreat of visioning and creativity and innovation and looking forward and planning to the future uh, this weekend. And I want to give my thank you, my deep gratitude to you. For the work that you have done and that you continue to do and how you continue to lead us in excellence um, in this season of this congregation. Thank you so much to this leadership team. You may be seated. And I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to Bryce. There's Bryce. Bryce, raise your hand. <laughs> um, Bryce was here uh, Friday helping to make sure everything was set up. And we had our snacks and we had everything that we needed to go on Friday. And, um, and, and going the extra mile to help make sure that our staff could enjoy their Friday off. And so Bryce was here helping to make sure the fellowship hall was set up and the snacks were out and all of that. And so we want to give an extra thank you to Bryce, one of our, our almost teenagers. <laughs> Thank you.
I do also want to call our attention to the passing of Mr. Jack Head. Um, those of you who read Thursday Thoughts will have seen my note. Um, Jack, for many, many, many years, uh, was Mr. Atlanta first. And he was the first uh, person that you saw when you came in the doors and the last person that you saw when you left. And he represented Atlanta first for years and years and years um, beyond the doors of this church in the life of the community and in the conference. And um, when you talked about Atlanta first, everybody saw the face of Jack Head. He passed away at 97 years old on Tuesday we will celebrate his life with a visitation at 10 a.m. and a funeral at 11 a.m. on Saturday, July 20 at Stark United Methodist Church in Jackson, Georgia. And I know that you will want to join me there to give thanks for his life and his legacy and um, for all that he has done to make sure that we would be able to worship in this place today. Amen? Finally, this morning, um, Christopher Bryant, come here. He's going he's gonna to not be happy with me for this. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> um, most of you know that we went through a lot of transition uh, over the last few years in our music ministry. And most of it was a surprise to all of us, including me. And um, Christopher came to us one year ago last Sunday, and he stepped in when I was gone unexpectedly. And over this year has literally transformed the face of worship and music ministry in this place and has put Atlanta First back on the map in Atlanta in terms of music and worship. I know you want to celebrate Chris's one-year anniversary with us today and say thank you to him. so much, so much to be excited about, so much to be grateful for, so much to look forward to, so much to be generous toward, so much to worship through, so much to get engaged with, so much to serve in, and so much to grow together through. So get excited. Get on board, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it as we continue in worship by standing to our feet and singing this great hymn of the church, hymn number 454, Open My Eyes That I May See. Children, us to 
seated. As we enter this time of prayer, I invite those that want to come to the communion rail and kneel and pray or stand and pray. You're welcome to do that. I want to uh, call attention to the beautiful flowers today that are on either side of the altar. They're in uh, by Wally Carroll and Stephen Colley and Pam and Aaron Peterson in loving memory of Pauline Colley and in honor of her birthday, July 16th. We are grateful for the beauty of these arrangements. As Pastor Jasmine said, our prayers of sympathy go to the family of Jack Head uh, as he enters glory. We also want to send our prayers of sympathy to the family of Tosca Bodenheimer. Her service was uh, this past week on Tuesday. And you'll notice on your prayer list our church family, our extended family and friends. We definitely want to pray for our active military, uh, those on active duty in military away from us today. And always we lift up our first responders that God's grace will be on them and that they will be safe, return home safely this day as well. Let me invite you to breathe in the Holy Spirit and breathe out anything that would prevent us from focusing on our Lord today. Gracious God, in the beauty of this morning, we offer our praise and thanksgiving for your abundant love, for your abundant grace. Your presence fills our hearts with wonder and awe. You are the all-powerful creator, and yet you know each of us intimately. And in spite of knowing us intimately, you are graciously loving and slow to anger. Forgive us, dear God, when we fail to make you the center of our lives. When we have failed to make you the source of our words and the reason for our serving actions. Where our vision has been too narrow, help us to see your larger vision that looks beyond our differences and human boundaries to draw all people to you. And this morning we seek to be your church. Empower us to make the good news of Jesus Christ a living reality in our lives. Teach us how to build others up, to encourage them in their daily walk of faith. Teach us how to see the good in others that seem so different than we are. And teach us to love one another just as Jesus loves. In these moments, we pray for your real and eternal presence to lead us this day and in the days ahead to walk beside those in need, to lift people's hearts, to reassure those who are anxious or fearful, to remind them of your constant love and compassion. We pray for all who are sick or suffering today, those on our prayer list and those that are on our thoughts and in our hearts, that through the power of your Holy Spirit, they may find renewed hope. Make us agents of your healing love. And this, Lord, this uh, week, Lord, we know that there are those suffering right now in this very hour from hurricane, from floods, from fires in our United States and all over the world. Make us instruments of your peace. Help us to live lives that encourage and help those in need. Quicken our steps to help all those who suffer. We're truly grateful for your presence and holy vision for our church and this beautiful city that's in, that inspired each of our leaders during the church leadership retreat this weekend. We're grateful for their time and their energy, their love for you and your love for them. 
And now in this season of prayer, we pray for Pastor Jasmine as she gives us your words of life this morning, that they may not only abound in our spirits, but rattle around in our brains that we might be changed, transformed, renewed, and courageous as we share the good news outside these walls. Now transform us, we pray, into more loving members of the body of Christ so that his grace may abound in the lives of all we touch and meet. All these things, dear Jesus, we pray in your holy name, just as you taught us the prayer that you taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. children to stay or to come down, and those that are young at heart, our youth, and anyone who wants to come and join me at the communion rail for our uh, little special children's time today. Where would you like to sit? Anywhere you'd like to sit. I haven't met all of you. I'm Pastor Walter. I know these two. Hi. I'm glad to be here. So, you know who this is, who I brought today? You have an idea? A lion. A lion. A, maybe a lion cub, maybe. Have you watched The Lion King? I know you all want this. <laughs> this could be Simba. Simba, the son of King Mufasa, his daddy. So... I brought this because his daddy told him something very, very special. Now, I brought this. You know what this is for? Looking at yourself. It is. And I tell you what, when you look in a mirror, it reminds you of what you look like. Beautiful or old. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> or old. And Pastor Jasmine is going to talk to us today about remember who you are. So a mirror helps us remember what we look like. And when you get my age, you look in the mirror and you think, oh, good, I remembered where my glasses are. <laughs> but at your age, you can look and see how you grow and how handsome you are and how beautiful you are. And there's a reason I brought this in and Simba. Simba didn't have a mirror, but he had water that he looked in that caused a reflection, almost like a mirror. Now, this tells us what we look like but in order to remember who we are we want to remember that you are a child of God and you are a child of God and you are a child of God and all of us are God's children out here and that helps us remember who we are and when you're baptized that's God's claim on you you're now baptized, brought into God's family. And it's beautiful. So all baptized Christians all over the world are part of God's family. That means they're part of our family. So we can remember who we are by that as well. And last week when we had Holy Communion, we remember how much Jesus loves us when we take Holy Communion. And we remember that we are his church. So Simba looked into the water and he saw a reflection, and he thought it was his daddy. But his wise counselor said, it's you. Your daddy is in you. Remember who you are. So today, Simba says to us, remember that God loves you, that you are God's child, and I am God's child, 
And it doesn't really matter so much that we remember what we look like in here because we know that God will always know us and recognize us. Thank you, Simba. Remember who you are. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that you give us hearts and minds not only to know ourselves but to know you and that you send us reminders of to remember who we are. So when we go out of this place today, or even in this place, in our children's Sunday school time or in our worship together, we need to remember that we are your children, created in your image, and loved unconditionally by you. Thank you, Simba, and thank you, God, for your love. Amen. Thank you.
Did you come to worship the Almighty God this morning? I hope you did. I hope you didn't come because this is what we do on Sunday morning. I hope you didn't come because, you know, it was, you thought it might be air conditioned in here. I hope you didn't come to check it off your list this morning, but I hope you came to worship God. I hope you came to worship the one who woke you up this morning and set you on your way. I hope you came to worship God because God created you and blew the breath of life into you. Worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Amen. So today we continue the sermon series we started last week, The Gospel According to the Lion King. And this week we will focus on remember who you are. And we're beginning in Paul's letter to the Colossians. You'll find Colossians near the back of your Bible or feel free to open up your electronic devices and Google Colossians or go to that Bible app and open it up. You're going to need it today. And, and go to Colossians. Colossians is, is kind of a confusing and interesting letter. It's to a church an early gathering of people who are confused about why they exist. Yeah, uh-huh. Say that again. Huh. <laughs> they, they, they've gotten this thing twisted. See, they did not have an encounter with Jesus. This is one of those communities that heard about Jesus and heard about the good news of Jesus, but they didn't sit at the feet of Jesus. And, and now they're hearing things from other people and they're getting confused about who they are and what they're supposed to be doing and what the gospel of Jesus Christ actually is. You see, they're letting hearsay get involved. And they're letting bad theology get involved. <laughs> and they're letting politics get involved. And they're letting meology get involved. <laughs> and they're letting capitalism get involved. And, 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 and they're letting bad practices get involved. But, but you know, I'm just messing now. So, so let's turn to Colossians. Chapter 1, beginning in the first verse, and we'll start, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. This, is, this letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and from our brother Timothy, we are writing to God's holy people in the city of Colossae who are faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. May God our Father give you grace and peace. We always pray for you and we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all of God's people, which come from your confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. You have had this expectation ever since you first heard the truth of the good news. This same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives, just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. 
You learned about the good news from Ephraim, our beloved co-worker. He is Christ's faithful servant, and he is helping us on your behalf. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know good, better, God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, here we are to worship, here we are to bow down, here we are to say that you are indeed our worthy and our loving God. So blow a fresh wind and a fresh, fresh fire through this place, O oh God, to finish, to finish right, exit, remove anything that seeks to get in the way of your word this morning, O oh God. For we have come seeking a word from you, seeking restoration from you, seeking transformation from you, seeking blessing from you. So have your way, O oh God, and hide this your servant behind that old rugged cross so that everything that is said and everything that is heard comes straight from you, O oh God. This is your servant's prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. So here we are getting in the middle of the African safari, ready to go on a new adventure today. But before we go and get in our ride so we can see which animals we're going to see today, we need to make sure we have what we need. So let's go through our bag for today and, and, and make sure we have our supplies, Pastor Walter. Let's see. Got my trusty, dusty safari hat. Check. Water. Remember how hot it is out there? Atlanta doesn't have anything on African safari. <sighs> Critical. don't need that. Who put a ball in my bag? Definitely don't need weights. Jesus told us something about putting down all the things that weigh us down, right? So we're going to leave these at home. Whew. We don't need that. All right. Les, I remembered our camera today, so I'm ready to join you in, in taking some really good, good pictures on our, our journey today. We'll, we'll, we'll hang our camera, camera up here. And, and, and my stepfather, my opa, he, he always said, he said, don't, don't leave home without a good walking stick or, you know, you might need to bop something or somebody upside the head every now and then. And, and, and you know, Rafiki, the monkey and the Lion King, he, he has some on the end of his stick to rattle off some things. So I think we'll take this 
this stick with us. By the way, Opa handmade this stick for me. He always wanted it in my car just in, in case I needed some extra protection. <laughs> You think that's, that's what we need for today, maybe? Oh, oh, we forgot our guide map. We'll need that. You see, Paul is writing to the people who are on a journey. And he's writing to the people who are on a journey, even maybe a safari, because the people of God have a tendency to lose their way. <laughs> because we've heard the good news. We've heard the story. We've learned it in Sunday school and small groups and from our grandparents and our ancestors. It's been passed down and passed along. But because we didn't have the firsthand experience of sitting at the feet of Jesus, sometimes it gets lost and sometimes Sometimes we get it twisted and sometimes we don't like the way that it comes out so we interject our own stuff into the story we interject what makes us comfortable into God's good news and we make it the way we want it to be so that we can feel good about our behavior about how we're acting and about what we are doing The people of the church in Colossians had gotten into this thing called Gnosticism. It's a big church where Gnosticism, it starts with a G, G-N-O-S-T-I-S-M. Look it up, Gnosticism. What it means is that you start pulling your own stuff, <laughs> your own belief, your own practices from other kinds of religions and other kinds of ways of living, and you try to make that what Jesus said. but that's not the way this thing works. And so Paul has to write to the Colossians, the church at Colossians, a very young church, but a good word for the church of God today. He has to write to them, and he starts with a good pastoral word. Pastor Walter, he says to them, we pray for you. He doesn't start with, you hard-headed knuckleheads. That's where I like to start, Dr. Bob. <laughs> but, but, but he starts with, dear brothers and sisters, you beautiful people of God, we pray for you. We, we give thanks for you. Because we know you have faith. We know you mean well. We know you're doing your best to love the people. And, and it comes from a confident hope that you have. But dang it, you're just not getting it right. He says you're trying. You, you have the best intentions. But the GPS said go straight, and you veered off to the left. He said the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, what Jesus taught us, what Jesus said, what Jesus said, what Jesus said, what Jesus said, what Jesus showed us, 
what Jesus Christ taught us, what Jesus Christ died for, what Jesus Christ was resurrected for. That word is bearing fruit and is literally transforming lives. But what you're doing we haven't stopped praying for you. Maybe I can make it clear in another way. Jesus said love the people. Some kind of twisted faith we have says lock them in cages. Jesus said, welcome the stranger. Some, somewhere along the line, we messed up and got something from somewhere in our faith that says raid the people, lock them up, and carry them out of here today. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. All across this planet, we are exercising slavery and racism and sexism and all kinds of isms. And Paul is writing to the church at Colossians and saying, don't get it messed up. Don't get it twisted. Your way is not Christ's way. And it is the good news of Jesus Christ that is bearing fruit. It is the good news of Jesus Christ that is transforming lives. You don't get to change the story. Remember who you are. In the Lion King, we talked about last week that the evil uncle, I can't even remember his name right now, Scar. <laughs> Scar decided that he just couldn't wait to be king. Even though that, remember that Paul reminded us in Galatians that we're to stay in our lane, right? We're to pay attention to the good work that God has called us to and not worry about what God has called anybody else to. But Scar decided that he just can't wait to be king. Even though that was Simba's job. Simba the lion cub. Y'all remember Simba? And, and, and he killed King Mufasa. And he convinced Simba that it was his fault. And, and so Simba ran away into the African plain. He ran away from home. He ran away. He escaped. And he did everything he could to escape from who he was created to be. He did everything he could to not remember who he is. He did everything he could to forget who he is. He was raised by a hog. <laughs> Yo, come on. Who comes up with this stuff? <laughs> And yet the essence of who Simba was created to be was still in him. It didn't matter the detour he took in life. It didn't matter who raised him. It didn't matter what he did. He couldn't escape who he was created to be. Simba could not escape his genes. Simba could not escape the purpose that God had on his life. Simba could not 
escape why he was in this world. And one day his little friend Nala, because things got so bad back home, Nala had to go find out how to fix some things. Everybody, anybody had a girl in their life who just had to figure out how to fix some things? Because sometimes, well, I'll just... I need my little stick here. Nala went looking for food because there was no more food at home. And Nala ran into Puma. <laughs> Thought that was food. <laughs> that was Simba's friend who raised him. And here comes Simba going to rescue his friend. And they look in each other's eyes. I know you from somewhere. I know you from somewhere. Have you ever come up on somebody? You've never seen them before a day in your life. And somehow deep down in your soul, I know you. Rafiki, the village sage, Happen to be a crazy monkey. Anybody have somebody in their family who's like the crazy aunt, but they're the wisest person in the world? That's Rafiki, okay? Rafiki presented the king, Simba, when he was born to, to the nation. And, and, and Rafiki comes back knowing that Simba is alive and knows that it is time for Simba to come home and to remember who he is and to live out his purpose in the world. Rafiki grabs his walking stick. <laughs> Simba, come home. <laughs> Simba, alive. <laughs> Everything all right. <laughs> Simba. <laughs> he said everything but hallelujah. Full-grown Simba runs into Rafiki. And Rafiki starts talking to Simba like he knows him. Simba says, do I know you? Rafiki says, yes. Simba says, oh, you knew my father. Rafiki says, Correction, I know your father. Simba says, oh, you don't know. My father's been dead for a long time. Rafiki says, stupid boy. Your father is very much alive. Simba looks up, very much confused. And Rafiki says, follow me. <laughs> In church language, we would sing, take me to the water. Take me to the water. Dig me to the water to be baptized. Pastor Walter, can you bring Simba over here for me, please? Rafiki takes Simba to the water. <laughs> he takes his stick and he knocks Simba over the head. And he says, look here, look here. And he puts his stick in the water. And he puts some of the water on Simba. 
And he says, what do you see? Simba sees his father in him. And he hears the ancestors say, remember who you are. Remember who you are. That's the whole point of this scripture. Paul is telling the people of God, what is your problem? Don't you know who you are? You don't need to add any other seasoning to this thing called Jesus. Don't add any more stories to Jesus' good news. It's enough all by itself. And don't you know who you are? You are the recipients of this good news. You are the children of God. You are the siblings of Christ. You are the, the bearers of this water. Remember who? You are. In 2008, I came here to be the associate pastor. I was straight out of seminary. I've been in a lot of churches because my mom and dad are both United Methodist pastors. I, I eat, sleep, breathe, church. I mean, that's what I do, right? But I have to tell you, in love, and as the shepherd of this church now, that in 2008, in my first church council meeting here, was the very first time I learned that the people of faith could have something called a scarcity mentality. That fear could rule so-called people of faith. It rocked me. It rocked me to my core. I didn't know it. I, I, I never encountered it before. Because I came from people, Pastor Walter, who were survivors. I, I, I came from people who survived slavery. I came from people who survived migration. I came from people who survived immigration. I came from people who were driven from their land to survive the trail of tears. I came from people who knew that God would make a way out of no way. I came from people that if we didn't have it, we knew that God was going to provide it. I came from people that trusted God no matter what. I didn't know anything about scarcity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I knew was abundance. And not because we had a lot, but because God was more than enough. Yeah. That is the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, what about homelessness, Pastor? We only have homelessness because we are selfish. Yeah. 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. The unfiltered, unadulterated, unmessed with, unwatered down, unpoliticized, unmade comfortable, unmeized. Yeah, I made that up. Gospel of Jesus Christ is radically inclusive, radically loving, radically sharing, radically generous, radically covering. It expects, it expects that we share, it expects that we understand that everything is a gift from God. It expects that we maximize God's resources. It expects that everybody loves one another with such a generosity that we love each other better than we love ourselves. The gospel of Jesus Christ before we mess with it. Take me to the water. So that we can remember who we are. So that our fear and our scarcity is turned into expectation and abundance. So that our protectionism is turned into joy. <laughs> so that what we see in front of us is nothing more <laughs> than... Stupid boy, don't you know your father is yet alive? <laughs> For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sin. So here's the invitation this morning. Remember who you are. Remember who you are individually and corporately. And if you're not made out of the same stuff that I'm made out of, fine. Find somebody who is and let them overflow into you so that you can remember that you are made up of the family of God and that Jesus Christ has the last word over you. And because the Holy Spirit reigns, there is nothing that can hold you back. When they counted us out. <laughs> they said we were going to close the doors. We didn't have enough money. That was in 2008. What year is it now? <laughs> he said we're going to be here. The invitation today is to shed fear, is to shed scarcity, is to shed whatever somebody told you you could not do, and to remember that the one that created you has said that there is nothing that is impossible with God.
and said, has said that he has given you, has traded with you light for darkness, joy for fear. <laughs> they don't believe me this morning. So the altar rail is open this morning. It's open for you to put down whatever you need to put down so that you can remember who you are and what you come from so that you can move forward as free and transformed people. And the altar rail is open this morning if you would like to join this church. And the altar rail is open this morning if you would like to make a first time commitment to this Jesus Christ who can set you free. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't miss this opportunity. You have two choices. Simba, you can run away or hide. Or Simba, you can remember who you are. It's your choice. God is at work. Won't you come? Remember who you are in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Another way we respond to the word of God is through our giving. We know that every, um, every gift, every dollar, every cent that you give through the Atlanta First United Methodist Church goes um, to worship, serve, grow, and engage in this community and beyond. This week, it went to serve those who came to the door needing rental assistance or um, food or clothing or um, crackers or water. Uh, it goes to keep Midtown Assistance Center housed. Uh, it goes to um, a safe house and friends at the front door and to many other mission and ministries in this city. For those of you who are worshiping online or who prefer to give online, you will find those instructions in your bulletin or in the comment section in your online viewing. Please give generously so that we might continue to be generous disciples of Jesus Christ. Ushers, won't you come?
Thank you for being in worship today. We know that there are so many other places that you could be, but that you have made it a priority to worship the one high God. And so we are grateful for that this day. Remember your neighbors and friends who are traveling this week. Remember your neighbors and friends who need you to encourage them, who need a smile, who need a hug, who need to be reminded that you are Jesus with flesh on and that you love them. Now, my t-shirt says, it doesn't have to be this way. And there is so much going on in the world that does not have to be this way, right? So people of God, remember who you are. Go forth from this place, but not from the presence of God. And now to the one who is able to keep us from falling and present us spotless before the Most High God, be all honor, glory, and praise now and forever. And the people of God sang. Thank you.